Hi there, welcome back to the Single Malt Review, and today's whiskey takes us into Louisville, Kentucky, but mm. it's not bourbon. Mm, no, it isn't. Well, it's very, very close cousin of bourbon. It is rye whiskey, Rittenhouse rye whiskey. It is from Heaven Hill, mm. Heaven Hill Distillery in Louisville, as you say. And um, this one is telling us that it is bottled in Bond, which I had a quick look up. Um, what that actually meant a wee bit earlier, and it's slightly complicated, so spot me if I'm wrong on this one. Bottled and Bond, as far as American whiskey is concerned, is whiskey that has been distilled from one distillery over one distilling season, which is a year, is at least four years old and at least 50%. So it's sort of a, um, I don't know, you could call that a mark of, of a certain basic quality. Um, I'm certainly liking the 50%. That guarantees you get quite a good amount in your bottle. Yeah, to a certain degree of regulation or government supervision. It's interesting, I find, that a lot of American whiskies wear the bottled and bond label as kind of a point of pride, considering they're often from states which historically have been a, you know, dubious of central government regulation. That's not meant to be a criticism of anyone, just a curious sociological observation. But, yeah. Maybe maybe whiskey is just where all Americans can get together at last. <laughs> so, uh, rye whiskey, as we said, and that means something technical as well. Rye whiskey, um, like bourbon, has to be made up of a mash bill of at least 51% corn to qualify. Rye whiskey is simply the other way around. It needs to have at least 51 rye in its mash. Mm. So... What this one's percentage is, I don't know. That information is probably out there somewhere, not necessarily under lock and key, but I was not able to find it in my sort of 20 minutes scooting around on the internet. So <laughs> um, that would be quite fascinating to know if anyone had that particular factoid, exactly how much mm. rye we're dealing here, or whether it is in fact a mere 51%. We do say it's straight rye whiskey. Are they mm. applying... Um... Oh, now you're getting into straight Kentucky as well, and that means right. the thing that we always get wrong. Um, I think no colour and chill filtration, that sort, oh, okay. of, that sort of thing. That, that's yet another legal term. Which is but. default for bourbon, but not necessarily <laughs> so for other non-bourbon. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a bit of a, it's a bit of a warren, really, yeah. um, so we won't go down that mm. particular hole uh, there because always, I always get straight Kentucky wrong, and people always get angry on the internet, so we will spare mm. us that today. Mm. Now, um, Rittenhouse Rye, 50% uncoloured we will assume mm. until filtered we will assume so that's nice and nice and solid of a whiskey yeah. and i think solid is probably my very mm. simple summary for how this one is this really is one of my real workhorse whiskies and i'll yeah. get into the things i do with it a bit later on well had the occasional rye whiskey i'm more used to having rye in assorted interesting mm. ales but uh yeah not averse to a rye yeah, whiskey as no, well. It's, it's an, a good, unique flavour to it. It's an interesting grain mm. in that no matter what you apply it to, you always get, um, though, I mean, if you're using it in a beer or something like that, it's obviously going to be um, a bit different, but what it always sort of um, communicates is this tremendous spiciness. It's mm. a very, very spicy grain. And spicy is one of the primary notes of bourbon. So mm. if you're um, using a rye whiskey, then you get a super, super spicy bourbon, and that's... That's sort of where the flavours start to alight for me. But yeah. we'll, um, we'll dive in and see. The maturation of this one is more or less the same as bourbon, isn't it? A good four years in a fresh oak cask? Uh, yes, this one is exactly four years, oh. I think, um, judging by their product page. Mm. And uh, yes, fresh fresh oak. Exactly the same as bourbon, probably aged alongside the bourbon yeah. in their warehouse. Mm. Mm. So, less yeah, of an immediate uh, vanilla hit than you'd get from, say, a comparable bourbon. I think there's less vanilla, mm. oh, more still sort there, of um, more cinnamon, Ooh. darker yeah, oh, flavors cinnamon. like yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely. There's it's like fresh cinnamon, but also that kind mm. of artificial candy cinnamon flavor too. Cinnamon flavor. is the the primary Cinnam one I um, mm. I get off it, but there's clove, and that shares with bourbon. It shares a lot of its DNA yeah. with bourbon. It's quite a quite a similar profile. Mm. It's got quite a prickle too, but I could attribute it back to well, the filthy, stinking heat. Yeah, here it is. Today. It is sweltering in here. We've got the cooler on, but it's it's really it's struggling. You know, it's, we are close to Christmas here in New Zealand, and that yeah. means we are at the pointy end of summer. It's really starting to get quite hot, which means, of course, any high strength liquor, you're going to get some fumes. Mm. So yeah, it has a, it has a fair kick mm. to it, but um, considering it's fifty percent, it's not too strong. Not mm. too strong on the nose. It's pretty gentle in terms of its. I'm not getting more flavors. Cloves, some bit of a. This is going to sound weird, but banana cake. Mm. You have a chocolate iced banana cake. Yeah, yep, there is some that sort of staples. banana fruity estery mm. flavour. That's 
that's certainly hanging around. So before I blow up my nose here, <laughs> I'll see what it's like on the palate. Ooh. Mm. That's Ooh, hot. That is. Real prickle. That's real hot. I think the um, the day isn't doing it too many favors mm. there. That's maybe if I'd chilled that just slightly, it would be a bit more well behaved. Mm -hmm. That is a real fiery butt kicker. Yep. That one. Um, that decide though, it's really good. It is a real, real potent, potent flavor there. Lots of cooked fruit flavors. Thinking again back to a banana cake, that's still there, mm. and a hefty icing of assorted spices too. Yeah, it's whole spice mm. or all spice. They sometimes call it. But there's nutmeg, heaps more cinnamon, mm. heaps more clove. It's a really lively, spicy, and very, very long drink. Very yeah. spicy flavors to me. Mm. They're the ones that sort of hang around. And so this one has a lovely sort of long mm. palate on it. Um, this is not how I usually drink it, but you can just get away with it. Just get away mm. with it at 50% uh, if you like your whiskey quite strong. Yep, I'm getting away with this one very well at 50%. Yeah. Um, of course, this one, though it's... A lovely whiskey to sip um, and I should probably do that more often this is the one as I said my workhorse whiskey this is the one that goes in my cocktails oh. and I do love a whiskey cocktail now and then um, and so does my partner she will destroy this whiskey um, well as we can see quite rapidly with the application of old fashions which mm. it makes a beautiful beautiful version on old-fashioned Manhattan um, are the two real, real big ones I'd recommend with this one. But really for um, any kind of whiskey cocktail which you want a sort of rich, round spiciness, uh, this one will do you extremely well. The only one I wouldn't recommend it for is a whiskey sour. You want a lighter, crisper whiskey for that one. In my opinion, I think it's sort of um, anything with, yeah, anything that you want, uh, sort of a crisp, um, more sharp taste. This sort of very, very mellow, generous mm. whiskey isn't really the one for that. Well, better than a gentle splash of water. That's really just more of the same, only even easier to drink now. Yeah. It sort of broadens it out a wee bit, as water is wont to do. Now there's sort of a maraschino cherry, the glaze cherry mm. kind of a thing. A little bit of... A little bit more nuts yeah. coming through now. Not that, um, not that sort of lovely corny popcorn that mm. you get from a bourbon. So that will be the lack of lack of corn there. But mm. it is replaced by a tremendous uh, wealth of other flavours. There's yeah. even some. You said banana cake in there, but mm. it may just be because it's Christmas time and I'm, I'm put in the mind of it. But I'm getting some real, like a really dark, heavy fruit cake. Oh, okay. Um, mm. With okay, the sort I of the raisins and yeah. the, the maraschino cherries kind of baked into it. Mm. So you get that very, very dark, sweet, and but fruity at the same time. Yeah, there's mm. less of that hot, spicy bite, but uh, it's still a bit like chomping into a, a square of uh, crystallized ginger. Yeah, no, this is really good. I think the, the way I would best mm. describe this to um, fans of both American and Scotch whiskey, as we are, is this is a bit like the Glendronach of American mm. whiskey, I think it's probably a good way of calling it. It has these rich, fruity, deep, dark flavours and um, it does share a wee bit in common, at least compared with bourbons. But it's an absolute, absolute favourite of mm. mine. I've tried other whiskies, uh, rye whiskies. Um, I think this is not only cheaper than, but better than a great, great many of them. Mm. Um, and it's just such a versatile thing as well. It's just killer for those classic American mm. cocktails, but it's perfectly good on its own or with ice or anything, anything really. It's yeah, a real, real all-rounder whiskey. Go for one of these straight over mm. a huge ice cube on zero today. So yeah, my, my score for this one, um, it's going to be 88. Mm. It's really, really, really fine stuff and it's just an amazingly low price it's almost oh. stunningly low uh, for something that's such good quality it's cool. cheaper than cheaper than sort of almost anything else in the same mm. category cheapest rye, rye whiskey you can buy in our um, our market that's for sure mm. and yeah it being one of the best that's a that's a real bargain any day of the week so i have to pick one up to yeah. decorate my own drinks cabinet so what's your verdict there on mm. the scores very close, but even higher. This one rates mm. an 89 from me. Well, there you go. Still pretty good consensus mm. there, only one apart. Yeah, I think it's um, really, really amazing stuff, this Rittenhouse Rye. It's um, it's not a very... It's not a very... There's not a lot of pomp and circumstance associated with it, beyond its, um, you know, sort of bottled and bond thing. And, I mean, that's, that's obviously... Um, it's not um, not made up, you know. They are they are adhering to all of those things, those basic quality functions, and I think it does 
um, show through because that's a real solid whiskey and it's solid year to year. This is just, it's a, um, a real monument mm. to rye whiskey. It does not change. I've had a few others. We tried the, um, the bullet rye recently and that I think has fluctuated in the, um, in the past. This one, solid. Solid the whole way down. So yeah, absolutely uh, recommended. This is probably, I mean, we've tasted bugger all rye whiskey, but this sits at the top of mm. recommendations for that one, if that means anything. So um, to the people that asked for the Rittenhouse rye review, there it is. I hope that was of yeah, some well, use. Thank you for recommendation um, too. This is yeah, it's, it is, it is um, killer stuff. Mm. It's, uh, it's the cornerstone of any liquor cabinet, I think. Um, if you ever want rye whiskey, this is the one to at least start with. But mm. Anyway, uh, that's what we've started with this weekend. So we will barrel down the hole and um, see what's next on top of the pile. Mm. In the meantime, keep safe, Slanger, and we will be right back.